What's going on guys, my name is Mad, and today we're going to take a look at what I think is one of the best $1000 pre-builds that you can buy right now thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Skytech. This PC is perfect for both gaming and streaming, and as a little teaser, here's me streaming Cyberpunk to Twitch at 1080p, high settings with well over 60fps. This is the Shiva 2 from Skytech, which currently sells for $999 on Amazon, and while this video is sponsored, I wasn't given any talking points and was basically told to make the video however I wanted, so that's what I did. In today's video, we're going to be going over the unboxing and setup experience, talk about all the parts going inside of it, go over how this system performs in today's most popular titles, and finally do a price analysis to see the cost difference of building this same system yourself versus just buying one pre-built. So without further ado, let's dive right in. The Shiva 2 comes single boxed and the carrier definitely wasn't very careful with it. We can see some bumps, impact marks, and even a crushed corner that likely occurred from a drop. Normally this wouldn't be a good thing, but I was actually happy to see it as it would be a good test of Skytech's packing methods when faced against what I would consider to be towards the more severe end of expected shipping wear. Opening the top of the box, we find a folder with some documentation. I also pulled out the included keyboard box, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Then I flipped it over to release the system. While doing this, the included mouse along with the power cable and Wi-Fi antennas also came out. Skytech is using high quality, thick, closed cell foam, which is great to see. The system also comes in a thick bag that should prevent light scratches if the box is impacted like it was here. When giving the exterior a quick look, I couldn't see any external damage or scratches at all. The only thing was the top dust filter shifted during shipping, which I just quickly unbent and moved into place. This could have been prevented with some tape, which is what a lot of case manufacturers use to secure magnetic dust filters during shipping. Not the end of the world, but it is worth pointing out. Inside of the case, we can see a big stop sign telling the user to use the quick start guide, which wasn't included in the materials, but is available for all models on the Skytech website. Hinging open the side panel, we can pull out the internal foam to check the state of the components. This is Instapack, which basically starts out flat, and when activated, it expands to fill all the dead space. It's not cheap, and some pre-built makers go without it, but it's the best way to protect the internals, and I'm glad to see it used here. Once all the packing material was out, I found a pretty neat main chamber with no loose or disconnected cables. My first impression on cable management was that it was very solid. Nothing crazy, but definitely better than what most first-time builders are going to be able to manage. So with the initial physical inspection done, I was ready to turn this PC on for the first time. The included keyboard is this full-size Aki mechanical board with blue switches and this faux RGB lighting. It's nothing to write home about, but it will get you up and running and allow you to dip your toes into the world of mechanical keyboards. The mouse is a moderately sized Skytech branded mouse with all your standard buttons, RGB lighting, and a braided cable. Again, this isn't amazing or anything, but it's nice to see a usable gaming keyboard and mouse included, which I would personally value the pair at around $30 to $40, which is a nice value add. Before plugging everything in, I noticed this sticker on the back, which basically ensures the end user will know to plug their display cable into the GPU and not into the motherboard. I really do like this as this sticker along with the quick start guide will ensure the buyer can get everything set up correctly even if they know nothing about computers. What I don't like is the residue this leaves behind. I removed it in a few seconds with some alcohol but I do think this is one of those little things that could be easily avoided with a slight change to how the sticker slash message is applied. After pressing the power button, I was greeted by a ton of RGB LEDs, including the five fans and three diffused LED strips, two on the front and one on the side of the case, which are customizable, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. After a few seconds, I was presented with the Windows 11 setup screen that took about five minutes to go through, and boom, I was dumped directly into Windows 11. I updated the pre-installed graphics drivers and did some Windows updates, but once that was done, I was ready to start downloading and testing out games, which is one huge advantage of going with a pre-built. The entire process of unboxing, starting up, and updating took under 30 minutes, which is a fraction of the time you would spend parting out a system, building it, installing an OS, along with all the drivers like you would with a custom system. Now I'm not saying those aren't valuable or rewarding things to do, but they do take time and can take a lot of time if you're new to computer hardware or run into an issue like a part coming DOA. Before I talk more about the software side of things and about gaming benchmarks, I want to talk about all the parts inside of this system. What are you getting for your 999 USD? 
Well, I'm glad you asked. The CPU inside of this system is the Intel Core i5-12400F. This is a perfect choice for a $1000 pre-built in my opinion. It has 6 cores, 12 threads, and is running on the Intel 7 lithography, so IPC is great as well. The 12400F is really good at gaming, streaming, and even a lot of workstation applications like video editing. There are some other options around the same price, but I still think this is currently the best price to performance budget CPU on the market right now. To cool the CPU, Skytech went with a small tower style cooler which features plenty of copper heat pipes, a decent sized fin stack, and a 92mm RGB fan. This is a really good pairing with the 12400F which you'll be able to see temps in the benchmark section and is definitely a major step up from the Intel stock cooler. The motherboard's an area a lot of pre-built manufacturers cheap out on, but this isn't the case here. Skytech went with a Gigabyte B660 DS3 HAC. It's a full-size ATX board with four DIMM slots, decent VRMs, plenty of PCIe expansion slots, and decent back panel I.O., including built-in Wi-Fi. It even has an extra M.2 slot for easy storage upgrades in the future. Overall, this Gigabyte board is very high quality and is a choice I'm very happy Skytech went with. For RAM, the Shiva 2 is rocking a 16GB kit of Team Group T-Force memory at 3200MHz CL16. This is a solid budget RAM kit and I think it makes sense in this build. Would 32GB have been more ideal? Definitely, but if you do want more memory in the future, you can always pop another 16GB kit into the two unused RAM slots. One other thing to note is this system was running at 3200MHz out of the box, so I didn't have to enable XMP or anything, which is great to see and means you'll be getting the most performance out of this configuration without even having to go into the BIOS at all. For storage, this system is rocking a 500GB Kingston NV2. This is a Gen 4 budget NVMe SSD that will give you enough room for your OS, applications, and 5-10 to 10 of your most played games. Performance is decent, and I don't have any problems with this drive selection. Personally, with the price of flash storage and ever-increasing size of games, I would have liked to see a 1TB SSD, as it likely would have only added about $10-$20 to $20 to the materials cost and would have given users a little more storage headroom. With that being said, 500GB is still a decent starting point. For the graphics card, Skytech went with a single fan RTX 3060 from Asus. This card features very solid 1080p performance and even 1440p performance in a lot of games. This is a 12GB model and includes other nice features like Nvidia's NVENC encoder, which is part of the reason why this system can handle streaming as well as it does. One other thing to note is that even though this is a compact single fan card, cooling performance is still really good, and again you'll be able to see real time temps in a ton of different games in the benchmark section of the video. Would an AMD card have provided more performance at the same price? Probably, but the reality is is Nvidia has a much better track record of stable drivers and I've seen a very large bias towards Nvidia cards amongst less informed consumers. So from a business and marketing perspective I can definitely understand why they went with a 3060 and I personally think it was a pretty good choice. The power supply is the one oddity in this build, it's stated to be a 650 watt, 80 plus gold rated unit but there aren't any stickers on the unit itself so I wasn't able to see the brand or model used. But after talking with Skytech, they informed me this is a Montec unit which seems to be of good quality. After a little more digging, I found this is a Montec Gamma 2 which features all Japanese caps and is viewed as a decent mid-tier power supply. This unit is non-modular and features all black sleeve cables. Overall it's great to see Skytech using a decent power supply as this is another area pre-built manufacturers often cheap out on, but again just isn't the case here. Finally, the Shiva 2 is using this white Skytech branded mid tower case that's actually really good. It has a toolless tempered glass side panel, a ton of easily removable dust filters, and lots of RGB from the case fans and the LED strips. Something kind of cool is the front LED strips are actually connected with pogo pins to the front panel so when you take it off to clean the filter you don't have to worry about plugging and unplugging any LED cables. The front IO is also great with two USB 3 ports and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB-C port which is not something I expected to see. You also get your standard audio jacks along with power and reset buttons. The final button is labeled LED and is connected to the built-in RGB and fan controller meaning you can on the fly toggle through a ton of different lighting profiles with no need to mess with any RGB software. Also this case has a lot of room for cable management which Skytech took advantage of to cable manage the back end very well. 
all in all, for a $1,000 pre-built, the part selection and quality is super solid. It would have been nice to know the model of power supply used, but given that it's 80 plus gold rated, it does give me some peace of mind. So now that you've seen all the parts going into this PC, it's time to go over the gaming and streaming benchmarks. So without further ado, here are the gaming benchmarks. As you can see, this system is going to be able to play pretty much anything you throw at it at 1080p, high settings with 60 plus FPS, along with plenty of performance for competitive play in games like Valorant, Rainbow Six, and Overwatch. In terms of temps, they were great. While gaming, the CPU stayed between 43 and 57 degrees, which is very solid, and the GPU varied between 65 and 72 degrees depending on the game, which is also very solid. With four case fans, an aftermarket CPU cooler, and a decent GPU cooler, it means your system is going to be running cool and quiet as fan noise was audible, but not anywhere near what I would consider loud. Prebuilds do have a reputation for poor thermals, but that's just not the case here. In terms of streaming, I tested both an esports title in the form of Valorant and a AAA title in the form of Cyberpunk 2077 broadcasted to Twitch at 1080p 60fps. This resulted in a great experience on my end and the stream end. There was almost no performance loss while streaming thanks to the 3060's encoder, and overall this would be a great starter streaming PC. So how much would it cost you to build an equivalent custom PC yourself? Hopping on a PC part picker, I made a list using all the same components, adding in acceptable replacements where not available, for example, I went with the cheapest 80 plus gold rated power supply with 650 watts or more, and I went with a cheaper dual fan 3060 that will perform the same as the one in this system. Doing this resulted in a final price of $870 for just the parts, and $990 if you include the cost of a retail copy of Windows 11 Home. Obviously, you can find Windows keys cheaper, but even doing so would likely make the final price come out to about $900. So why would you pick something like the Shiva 2 over building a PC yourself? Well, I think for a lot of people, the time required to build, set up, and configure a custom PC just isn't desirable. Beyond this, you get some extra value adds like the included keyboard and mouse, along with a warranty. The one year warranty can be enticing because if something goes wrong, Skytech will help you to figure out the problem and get it fixed, versus with a custom PC where you would have to diagnose the problem yourself, then RMA the individual part that failed, which can be a more difficult process. All in all, if you're in the market for a pre-build around this price, I think the Shiva 2 is a solid option. If you're looking for something with a different price or a slightly different configuration, then I would recommend checking out some of Skytech's other offerings, which there are tons ranging from budget to very high end. I'll link the Shiva 2 along with some other good options from Skytech's lineup in the description below. Thanks again to Skytech for sponsoring this video and allowing me to give my full unbiased thoughts on this machine. 
With that being said, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of this PC in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. Oh, and as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.